Hi, everybody. We're here in Uberlandia, Brazil. We're here to meet up with a really good friend of mine, Daniel Robert Silva, a rising star in the Dutch National Ballet. We wanted to come here to see how he grew up. When I was young, I had a dream of one day becoming a world famous ballet dancer. Now having achieved that and danced on some of the greatest stages around the world, I find it absolutely fascinating how many people share that exact same dream. This is an exploration of the emergence of classical ballet in the most unlikely places. I'm traveling the world to talk to people in these countries who are passionate about this art form. How are you? Hey. Good to see you too. So, Welcome thank you. to Berlandia. Oh, wow. So how does it feel to be home? Feels good. Yeah? Feels nice. I thought that we should meet here in this football field. You know, it's very Brazilian-like. Yeah. Nice. So, um, tell me a little bit about Uberlandia. What uh, your impression of the city. How did it feel for you to, to grow up here? What's your impression? Uberlandia, it's a very special city for me. My life started here, my family is here, everybody I know in Brazil mostly is here in Uberlandia. <laughs> and uh, the city is so special, it's a big city, but, uh, and um, it has a special smell to it. The mm. food here is amazing. Yeah. Uh, the people are very nice, very kind, very typical Brazilian. Always smiling, always happy. Nice. Yeah. Berlange is a very, uh, it's home. What's your favorite dish here? Oh, I have many dishes here. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot pick one. I think I would be unfair to the other ones. <laughs> so I'm going to be political and say I like, I like a lot. Okay. A lot of dishes. <laughs> that works. Yeah, I'm the same. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... When you come back to Uberlandia, you've been, how long have you been gone now? I've been gone for six years. Wow. Six years already, okay. yeah. So when you come back, uh, how does it feel? Like, what's your, what's your initial feeling just when you first see the city and you get those smells and, you know, what is that? What's your initial feeling? It's, wow, I'm back. <laughs> and uh, it's mixed feelings because... For me, sometimes it feels like the city changes so much, but not at the same time, mm. you know? Uh, yeah, it's weird. It's mixed feelings, a lot of mixed feelings. My family is here, so I got really excited to see them. Uh, I don't come for the city itself. The city mm. is amazing, of course, but the family is the most important thing. Mm. So I get a lot of mixed feelings to see how they're doing because I'm away for so long and I come back and I don't have contact with all of them. Mm. So it's like a moment of uh, getting to know what's going on. Mm. Yes, it's a lot of mixed feelings. Yeah. But I love to land and to have to feel the smell yeah. and uh, uh, the airport is so tiny. That airport <laughs> doesn't, hasn't changed for, I don't know, ever. I and, love uh, I love the landing in the airport. You, <laughs> you, you end. And then you have to turn around and yeah, come back on the like same the on the same, same strip. Yeah, it's like, it's like okay, well, this is a small airport. Yeah, and uh, the people that work in the airport are the same people that I've really? been traveling for I don't know past <laughs> six years or more. So it's very it's very um, familiar. Hmm. It's very familiar. Yeah. Coming home is coming back to a familiar place every time. How, how often? You, you said you've been gone for six years. How often do you come back? I come back every year. Once a year? Yeah. It's uh, the only thing that, that I have planned <laughs> for my year. Time for to go myself, home. it's time to go home. Yeah. You're a, you're a busy guy when you come back. You said you have, uh, you speak, you do galas. Tell me, tell me about all the different things you have going on around here. I try to be uh, very involved on what's going on here uh, back home when I'm back 
during summer. Gilmar, my teacher, mm -hmm. uh, also tried to keep me involved in a lot of her own projects. Uh -huh. uh, last year, I had a chance to be a judge in the YGP Brazil, the uh, yeah. uh, pre-selection for YGP in New York. Uh, I come and I visit social projects. I, I meet kids uh, that uh, were like me when I was a kid oh, as great. well. So because I I am a, a model for them, so it's nice to just come back and, and sit on the floor and like <laughs> and be like, hey, what's up? You know, like Watch just, those kids. Do they, do they, yes. uh, did they look at you and, and like, oh my gosh, there's... Their first uh, contact with me can be like that, but then they yeah. see that I'm just, you know, a simple, uh, very chill guy. So yeah. they're like, oh, it's just Danny, you yeah. know? <laughs> so it's nice. Oh, that's nice really cool. Nice to be back. Cool. And uh, I do galas sometimes. We try to organize uh, uh, galas that we can collect some money to help some states. Because oh, I don't know if you heard, but in Brazil, uh, for the past uh, years, a lot of uh, natural tragedies have been happening. So we try yeah. to look out for those too and try to send some help whenever possible. Oh, that's yeah. great. Um, so you said you come back here, you work with your teacher, Guimar? Yeah. Tell me about her, about uh, your relationship with her. You have lo you have a long history together, it seems like. Gilmar and I, it's a family relationship. Yeah, mm. she's much more than a teacher. Uh, and she's an angel in my life. Mm. I, I do believe that uh, in this life on earth, we have heaven and hell. And she is my little piece of heaven. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I adore, adore her so uh -huh. much, yeah. When did you guys first meet? We met when I was 11 years old to a social project and we haven't been apart since. Of course, now I live away, Yeah, but we, we keep contact. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and she's, she's been there in Amsterdam and every time I'm here in Uber Lunch, I spend a lot of my time as well with her. Mm. Yeah, because she, she played sort of a real pivotal role in your life, right? Yeah. You were, uh, tell me about yourself as a kid before you had met her. I was lost. I mean, I didn't have a, a goal. I wasn't really going to school. I wasn't, uh, I was being looked after, but I wasn't really being guided, mm -hmm. you know? So she, she's my guide. She was my guidance when I was a kid and she gave me purpose and she made me understand my talent and how to use it for good, you know? And also some discipline, right? A lot of discipline, yeah. She <laughs> yeah. disciplined me. Well, a... let's say that dance, ballet, is a very effective uh, form of education. Oh, yeah. So uh, so I'm very glad. <laughs> <laughs> it was an interesting story I heard about you and, and Guimar, the way she had sort of, I guess that was a turning point for you, right? When you were just sort of taking ballet, kind of like, oh, yeah, I'm doing this. And then yeah. Yeah, she was instrumental in a turning point that really shifted you to, to really start taking it seriously. And, mm -hmm. and that really developed your discipline from that mm -hmm. point on. Yeah, I mean, every time I sit down with her, she takes her job and she takes dance so seriously. And uh, ballet and art, it's a constant learning. And she's constantly, every day, trying to understand and keep up because it's an art form that is always evolving. Like mm. You, you mm -hmm. don't you never know enough. So that discipline and, and yeah, it's just, uh, it's, it's very <laughs> inspiring, yeah. inspiring. She's uh, changed me in so many ways. Mm. And I look after, I mean, look up to her a lot. Yeah. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, so prior to Guillemar, you said you were you were very lost. Uh, tell us a little bit about your life, where, you know, how you grew up. You have a an interesting family dynamic with your mother and your father. Tell us whatever you want or can about that. Well, I grew up in a broken home. Uh, there was no structure. Uh, my father. Uh, went to prison when I was quite young mm -hmm. and my mother was an alcoholic and for some time she was able to take care of us uh, but then like alcohol really took over and uh, so we were pretty much in the street we had a house but we were like spending days in mm -hmm. the street pretty much so 
until my mother passed away. Then I, uh, my grandmother, who is uh, the love of my life, mm. <laughs> uh, came to get us and she took care of us and she did the best she could until uh, Gilmar came in the picture. So it was a lot of... Uh, I was pushed around many times. Mm. Pushed around many times until, uh, yeah, something good happened. Yeah. yeah, nice. You want to tell us a little bit about your grandmother? Oh, my grandmother is the sweetest woman, the kindest person, and so simple and so. Um, it's a very simple lady, very very down to earth, very humble, uh, very honest, and uh, yeah, the most loving, loving person I know. Mm. Yeah. So you were studying here in uh, in Brazil <clears throat> with Guimar. Mm -hmm. You uh, were doing going around, traveling around to competitions. Yeah. Um, you had decided that you wanted to study in Toronto with the mm -hmm. National Ballet of Canada. Mm -hmm. uh, you had to sort of Trick your grandmother a little bit, right? What oh, happened yeah. there? <laughs> well, Into letting you go. Well, up to that mo moment to, uh, where I got the scholarship to join uh, Canada's National Ballet School in Toronto, I did many, many competitions around the world. So I traveled a lot. And since I was a minor, to, do, to be able to travel outside the country, I needed an um, authorization to go to go off mm -hmm. so knowing that i would have to go for canada for a full year of studies and also knowing my grandmother and i tried of course she she would let me go but i i didn't want to like tell her before because i i think that would make her devastated and very sad so i just tricked her into signing all the papers for me to go off to Canada as if I was going to come back in two weeks, as if it was just another competition. <laughs> and I remember a few days before I had to go on the plane, I, I, I broke it down to her. She yeah. was, so you're going to come back because uh, we're going to go to this family birthday. I was like, actually, no, I am coming back. Moving to Canada. I'm moving. <laughs> I am going to be <laughs> wow. away for months. And wow. that must have been her face hard. was was damn she was simply uh, shocked yeah <laughs> with yeah. the news but she ultimately realized it was probably the best thing for you yeah she always knew mm. she always knew even though I never really knew for sure that I would get an opportunity to go and study abroad mm. but I mentioned to her before because we had uh, in the same uh, group that I was part of, some people had already gone away. So ah. that was something that we were kind of hoping aware for. or hoping for huh. one day. Yeah. yeah. So it, so it, it wasn't like a total surprise, but she was kind of expected. It came a little sooner than she it was expecting. It came sooner than she expected. Mm. Also me, yeah. I was 15 when it happened. Yeah, wow. And I had four years of ballet. That's wow. it. Mm. So, you were a young kid, you grew up here in Brazil, mm -hmm. you, you'd been out of the country a few times for competitions and, and things like this, um, but always sort of a bit under supervision, right? And yes. always for a short amount of time. Yeah. Suddenly you've got this opportunity to move to Canada and you took it. What was it like all of a sudden, boom, you now live in Toronto? What was that experience like? Even though I knew I was going to move to Canada for like three months, I could not expect how it would feel like because I'd never been in that position before. Mm. So I was really excited and I was really nervous at the same time. But this feeling was no, no surprise for me because I've been in that situation many times before. Mm. Uh, so being there 
The thing that was the hardest at first was the language barrier because I didn't speak any English oh, yeah. when I moved to Canada. And, uh, and just trying to fit in with everyone. Suddenly I am in a school where all the kids are very privileged. And, uh, and even though the only thing common that we had was, was dance, that's it. I, could, I didn't understand what they were saying. Uh, I, and even when I could understand what they were saying, I could not really understand or uh, even express, express yourself. Express myself fully. And so there was, uh, I, I was very distant at first, but then after the ending of my school time, in the third year, uh, something happened. There was a switch, and uh, I became really close with them. So it took, took a lot of adjusting, and uh, but it worked out well. Yeah. Yeah. And did, um, I mean, dance is sort of a, is a very international language. And mm -hmm. Obviously, there's a strong camaraderie between a lot of dancers and students. You know, we always say that ballet dancers live in a in a shell, and we kind of do. How did uh, how did ballet sort of uh, or did ballet really help you sort of integrate or or just find a, a sense of community with with your friends and the people in in Toronto? It really did. It really did. Uh, I mean, in Canada, I spend all my days, all my hours with them. Mm. So I think even if ballet was not involved and I ended up there for some reason, spending that much time with everyone, I think I would find that sense of community. But, for, but I got that opportunity option and that opportunity through dance so of course ballet really creates uh like a big community and ballet around the world because mm. because i was in canada and there was uh this ai event where many schools from around the world just came to spend a week in canada oh, I now i know people everywhere yeah. all the companies i know people in china I know people in America, people back in Canada, people in Brazil, people in, in Europe, you know, yeah. it's, just, it's crazy. So like, even though the world is so big, the dance world is out, looks very big, but everybody knows each other. Everybody has heard of each other. And especially now with social media, it's like... Oh yeah, now it's times, it's, times a thousand. <laughs> yeah, so like, there is a big fan, There's, there is a big community mm. and... Uh, only art can do this. Only art can bring bring people together in such an intense way. Hmm. And so that leads us into you. You spent three years in Canada. You said. Mm -hmm. Then you had kind of an interesting story of how you ended up moving to Amsterdam to join the Dutch National Ballet. Mm -hmm. How did how did that all come about? Well, my last year of school, I was freaking out because I, I had to find a job. It's that last year of school, everybody's yeah, ah. I was like, I have no other option. I have no means of staying here another year. Mm. I need a job like for yesterday. So I did the application online to join the Dutch National Ballet to do the, the audition, the open audition. And, uh, I did it, the application, I was really excited. But when I received the email back, ac uh, the acceptance uh, email, it hit me that, how am I going to get there? <laughs> you know, yeah. flights are expensive. Place to stay is expensive. Food is expensive. I mean, come on, Euro mm. <laughs> compared to Real, <laughs> yeah. way more. Yeah. So I was like, okay, that was... Uh, Good to know that you know they would like to have me here for yeah. the have me there for the audition. So I came back to Brazil uh, for uh, the holidays, and Gilmar was asking me, "So where are you going to audition?" And I told her, "Well, I have one place where I'm going to do the audition, which is in Canada because I'm already there, yeah. and I mean I have no means to go on an audition tour." 
So that's the place and let's just hope for the best. Mm. And then she kept on asking me and then I told her about the acceptance uh, uh, for me to go to Dutch National to audition. And she was really excited right away and she told me that I should tell Mavis, the artistic director in Canada mm -hmm. of the school. And, and so I did and, and, I, and Mavis was really excited and I came back to Canada and we had a little meeting and, and uh, in the same week I had flights and I had a place to stay and wow. I had money for food and Mavis also because the audition in, in, in Amsterdam would be at the day after the audition in Canada. Oh, wow. So she also talked to the director in Canada of the company for me to have a private audition uh, a few days before. So I did the private audition. And as I left uh, the company there in Canada, uh, I got at, at the school and Mavis called me and said, Daniel, can you come to my office? As I'm there, she says, well, Miss Karen Kane, uh, asked me to let you know not to accept any offer in, in, in Amsterdam before talking to her. So that was the most exciting. Yeah, that's, that's like, okay. <laughs> news. Okay, people, so wait. People want me. <laughs> they, people, people want me. So that gave me courage because even though I had now flights, a place to stay and money to eat in Amsterdam, that comes with a lot of pressure yeah. as well. Like, yeah. Now you have to live they, up to I that. I have to live up to that. So I, I was also a bit insecure because my in my time in Canada, I wasn't dancing. I was taking classes. I wasn't on Studying. stage performing. Yeah. Or I wasn't really presenting myself that much mm. as I was here in Brazil. In Brazil, mm. I was dancing every month. Oh, wow. Like all the time I was dancing. Mm. So I had that insecurity but that phone call changed everything wow. suddenly i was like hey i'm ready i'm gonna go and get this <laughs> and i did and i had two two off two contracts i had two offers nice uh, by the end of the week with two really good companies two really phenomenal good companies wow yeah. that must feel amazing it did and coming from where you've come from it's like Wow. Yeah, achievement for me, from my family, for Gilmar, also for the school in Canada, having a student who, you know, went to two big places and did so well. So that was a really good start of my professional career. Nice. Yeah. So then, again, you've come from Brazil to Toronto, you have a total change of life. You spent mm -hmm. time in Toronto, you got used to things, you mm -hmm. sort of found your place, made you made connections, friends, yeah. and then time to move across the Atlantic. Welcome to Holland. What yeah. was that like? Well, at first, even though I had a contract in Amsterdam, I, mm. I wasn't sure if I was going to accept it mm. because I was in a very sweet spot in Canada. And mm. The company is fantastic. Yeah. So why, to, why change that? Mm. But uh, Gilmar had a say on this. My teacher, Stefanski, uh, 76 years old mm. now, also had a say on this. And they told me, Daniel, your place is Europe. You have to go, you gotta experience new things. Plus everything so close to each other. Mm. And, uh, and just start everything new, mm. new, new chapter. So I went again Time to get out of your comfort zone, Completely start from new. And start from, from new and, and it's been the most exciting years, past three years of my, prof I mean, of my career, <laughs> you know, and it's been great. And I've learned so much. I've laughed, I cried. I had so many opportunities uh, there. I met so many people also being out, uh, like just being like an adult. Mm. Living on my own and being and discovering things, you know, just like everything new. And Amsterdam is it's been an amazing place for that. Mm. You know, I met you, <laughs> and uh, I have friends of in the ballet, outside of the ballet, and all ages and all types of people. And it's just like I'm living life as mm. I'm dancing. Mm. You know. So you're you you've 
become pretty comfortable in Amsterdam. It's uh, it, the company is. Uh, I always like to joke. It's a bit like the United Nations. <laughs> we were talking earlier about how in ballet you you just meet people from around the world, and I mean we all have friends in just about every country you can think of, mm-hmm. and I think few companies are more international than the Dutch National Ballet, which I think is 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 a real for me. I think that's very. Uh, I would be very, I'm very, I would be very proud of that because you know, there's art, these great artists come from around the world and they live in, in Holland and they learn about the culture there. They, they sort of, many of them integrate, many of them move on, but mm-hmm. it just brings this wealth of knowledge and experience and we all get to communicate and, and meet each other and share my, um, my, my experience of growing up in the United States versus your experience of growing up in Brazil, but yet we both live in in the Netherlands, in Europe, and mm-hmm. and we bring this wealth of knowledge and experience from all parts of the world. Uh, you know how how has that been for you to to just really? It's make... been amazing, and it's been uh, familiar too. Because when I was a student here in Brazil, I was going around the world too, so I was in contact with a lot of different cultures all the time. And now in Canada too, a very international school. Mm-hmm. And now in Amsterdam, a very international city in a very international company. And uh, the company is very diverse. Uh, it's, it's, it's very nice to, to see different uh, styles of dancing, uh, different characters and being in touch with different cultures and being learning today. And and just be sharing, just sharing, and just sharing. Yeah. Listening to all these variety of languages. And yeah, <laughs> but it's it's uh, very it's very normal for us mm-hmm. to be in that situation. Yeah. But I would I don't know for someone who is not used to that, I think that would be quite. It takes getting used to. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we grew up in that. Interesting. Yeah, we grew up in that, yeah. so it, it feels normal. Mm. And. It's nice. It's very nice. So you have a very eclectic group of friends from very. so many countries. Uh-huh. You know, um, even Ahmad from from Syria. From Syria, you know, it's yeah. It's just such a, a, a mix, yeah. and yet you do have a tight knit group of friends who are all from Brazil as well. <laughs> Brazilians tend to find each other, which is the the most uh, unexpected thing for me. Yeah, because yeah, my best friend, I mean, my one of my best friends uh, is Parag- from Paraguay and I have one from Spain, but I never really got really close to, Bra- to I had Brazilian friends here, but I lost contact with them because I was so far away. And, uh, and from like 15 to 20, a person changes so much. Oh, wow. So like we became different people. Yeah. They have children now and just like yeah. totally... And they've, all, they've all stayed here, right? Yeah. Whereas you've been... I've been everywhere. and Passport I, looks like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I've changed so much, as they did as well. So, yeah. like, life happened between yeah. us. And I got really close to two Brazilians in the company. And uh, and what brought us together was a language. Yeah. Mm. It was really the language. Mm-hmm. And made, making fun of each other while speaking our own language. Because... We don't speak. I don't speak Portuguese as often as I speak English mm. when I'm I'm at work and I'm always at work. So coming back and having to communicate in English in Portuguese all the time with with my friends. So and, it's, a, it's a real adjustment. Yeah, and also uh, these two friends of mine they're from different parts of Brazil. So yeah. there's a way of speaking here in Minas Gerais. There's a way of speaking in the South. You know, we are speaking in São Paulo. So also making fun of each other uh, <laughs> brought us very, very close together. Yeah, yeah. Because Brazil is a big country. Are we yeah. living in Europe? We, uh, you know. Yeah. Because uh, also for me, the United States is is, mm-hmm. uh, is very similar. It's a big, big country in comparison to other countries. So you have a variety of different cultures. Mm-hmm. Um, tell me about your your impression of Brazil now, having having lived outside of the country for for a number of years now. What do you see? Uh, what do you see in Brazil? Well, I I see Brazil as many 
countries see it from outside, you know. Yeah. So I don't get a lot of good news, you know. Politics is going crazy, and you always get the bad, the bad stuff over over the news. Yeah. And uh, but I know Brazil from inside, you yeah. know, and I've been around in Brazil, and I come back. I have the chance to come back every year. Yes, things are not so great. But the, but what makes Brazil such a special place, such, so home for me, is the people. And the people, they don't really change. Yeah. Like, it's, it's in our blood, you know? It's, it's, it's happy, and music is such a big part of The music in of, Brazil our culture. is... <laughs> the food, and the colors, and the yeah. diversity. You see all kinds of people in Brazil. It's a very diverse you know? country. And even though I am around a very diverse group of people, mm. and I am in a very diverse company, it still is not this close of how diverse even the state of Minas Gerais, where I live, is. So it's, it's, it's pretty fantastic. Mm. It's uh, amazing. So, how about ballet in Brazil? Where, give me a little, uh, just your impression of where you think ballet came from, where it is now, and where do you see ballet going in the future in Brazil? Ballet, it's getting more exposure now in the, in the media in Brazil. So people are becoming to know more. It's be, people are more curious about it. It's, I feel it's a little bit more accessible, but yeah. we still need a big support, you know. Yeah. The arts in Brazil is just like the less funded, mm -hmm. uh, you know, part in the, in the Brazilian system. Mm. So that needs to change, but ballet in Brazil is, is, is big and uh, it's very strong. You it see Brazilian seems... dancers in every company, every company around, around the world, the world. Now has small a... company, big company, yeah. and they're doing good and representing very well. Some phenomenal talent yeah. coming from all parts of Brazil. And, yeah. and it seems like every major company yeah. has a Brazilian principal or, or yeah. an up, up and coming. Yeah. I mean, Brazil is a very important part of the global ballet community. Yeah. What... We're very determined people. And since ballet is not very accessible and there's no, not much support we have to really fight, mm. you know? And those who are fighting and those who get, who are lucky enough to get the opportunity as I did, they go off and they do well because we wanna, we wanna show and we wanna bring attention to Brazil and we wanna to, to help out here, you know? Because there's so many talented people, so, so much passion mm. uh, towards dance. Because we grow up around music and dance. So it's a like <laughs> rhythm is in the blood. <laughs> so yeah, Braz ballet is is um, is changing and it's changing. It's getting more exposure, and I I I like to believe that it's 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 getting better. And I see more and more and more Brazilian people, you know, doing well. And mm -hmm. also me in Amsterdam, I'm always hosting people in my house that want to come and audition for the Dutch National Ballet. Mm. You know, I, if, if I know a teacher or a teacher knows a teacher that knows me and wants like a student to have an opportunity, I'm always showing pictures and yeah. like trying to talk with Ted in the direction and say like, hey, there's this Brazilian person here and there. They must be tired by now, you know? <laughs> but I'm like, I'm trying, I'm like the Asian, you know. I'm sure <laughs> they're to, happy. I mean, it, trying to get as, ma as many Brazilians out there as possible. There's so much talent here. I'm sure any director yeah. would love to see how they can yeah. really help develop that. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, Brazilians are very proud of their country. Every Brazilian I know loves their country. Yeah. I'm so proud of it. Mm -hmm. what, uh, what do you think the future will be? I mean, as far as your perspective, you... Um, what? I don't know. Do you have any plans of coming back here, doing work yeah. here? If I stay in the, in the dance scene, even though I really hope it changes and I, wa I want to be part of that change, um, it's, it's hard to say. Like right now, as of today and this year, I don't see myself coming back as an artist to Brazil, maybe as something else, hmm. but as if I continue the art and if I continue to teach, 
uh, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna stay out there because mm -hmm. like that I can have better funding so <laughs> I can support groups and social projects here in Brazil. Maybe open a school and and do something mm -hmm. like that. I think I, I'll, I'll keep like like it is now. I'll be living away, but coming back to be back and forth with all the great dancers that are coming out of Brazil that are now dancing around the world in major companies. Uh, what do you think the Brazilian community outside of Brazil could do to help? Not not necessarily money, but just what do you think the 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 expat Brazilian community could do to help? Uh, build the arts in Brazil. Be present. Yeah, come back and be present. Visit a school, visit a social project, you know. Come and, uh, you don't have to come and dance, come and talk about it, you know. There are so many kids here, so talented, that have no contact with no one outside, you know. Just come, search for school. Uh, it, it, it can be any social project, a music um, as a, social project it can be dance it can be a any type you know just be present and just create that little curiosity to those who are here you know yeah i think that's that's w what we, we we can do and, and how we can change a little bit or yeah. change a perspective give come back and bring a bring a different perspective i think those things help a lot yeah it's amazing to see the reaction of kids when they you know they might think of ballet or something in their head as a dream but when you actually meet somebody face to face it makes it so real yeah. and it becomes attainable yeah i did not have that when i was a kid and it's difficult. and i think that would have made a total difference yeah for me you know so i'm trying to do to do to be that model to yeah. come back and, and just be like hey <laughs> this is real so this is what i've done <laughs> yeah <laughs> You know, yeah. Mm -hmm. so yeah, be present. Just come back and be present. You know, uh, it doesn't take much. And it also helps a lot of adults too. You know, because yeah. adults sometimes have this impression: oh, ballet is just a dream. It's this yeah. thing off in another country. Yeah. But they suddenly see that a Brazilian dancer has gone abroad, become something really important, mm -hmm. and by then them seeing you and having made a profession out of it, mm -hmm. being very successful mm -hmm. uh, around the world, mm -hmm. it suddenly becomes real for them as well. And they think, oh, this is actually a career. Yeah. It's a life. It's an yeah. art. It's something yeah. very unique yeah. and very uh, powerful, very reputable. Mm -hmm. And also because, like, I can speak for myself, being in Amsterdam and the company, I'm in contact with so many guest teachers and so many choreographers and doing so many different productions. So I'm getting so much knowledge from that as well. Mm. So I try to come back and share that knowledge too, because many don't have contact at all. You know, yeah. some ballets that I perform there, they don't even know how it is, like Balanchine, that mm. is not even <laughs> on social on the internet. So I have to come and like show a step and yeah. show a different style, you know, just Give show them a the knowledge. Piece of yeah. Four temperaments. <laughs> yeah. So sharing and mm. being present yeah. yeah yeah i think that's that's fantastic yeah. daniel thank you so much for having us here it's been really wonderful this country is incredibly beautiful it's a phenomenal culture and your story is really inspiring so uh where can we where can people find you and, and keep up with uh, how your career is progressing and and see what's happening Thank you for coming. Uh, I loved having you here. And thank you for sharing my story a little bit. Uh, people can for sure follow me and check out how I'm doing on Facebook, Daniel Robert, or Instagram, D. Robert Silva. And we have an amazing film coming out about his life, about where he's from and, and everything that's coming behind it. So you can see that coming out soon and uh, join us on www.balletrising.com. Thank you so much.